Hey everybody, Jason Reynolds here with the Real Estate Now podcast. So today I'm really excited. We are focusing on Keller, Texas, which is a town uh, north of Fort Worth. A great area. I've uh, been really growing a lot over the last few years and we have the uh, the pleasure of having the mayor, uh, city manager, and I believe the economic development director joining us today. So I just pulled up but wanted to jump on um, and give you guys an idea of what we're going to be doing today. And also, if you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, we're always looking to engage with everybody looking at watching and listening uh, through the podcast. And please feel free to like, share uh, this podcast and this post as well. Thank you guys and uh, welcome to the Real Estate Now podcast. Okay, everybody, so I'm really excited today. I did an intro, you guys know who we have, but I wanna walk through, we've got Mayor Pat McGrail right here with us. Hi there. And in the back we've got Trina, how do I pronounce your last name? Zeiss. Zeiss, okay. She is the Director of Public Services and Economic Development here in Keller. And then we've got Mark, how do you pronounce your last name? Hafner. Hafner, okay, he is the City Manager here in Keller. So we're gonna drive around a little bit. You guys have seen the podcast or part of it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just gonna drive around and uh, if you don't mind starting, introducing yourself. Yeah. So, before we get started, now, yeah. am I going to sing or not? <laughs> well, here, let me let me pull the radio no. real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll no, save that for the end. Yeah, okay. So, anyhow, I'm, I'm Pat McGrill. I'm the mayor of Keller, and I've uh, been involved in the city for 20-some years now. I'm probably pushing 25, so. Okay. Yeah. I've been I've been involved for a little while. Just a little while? Yeah. I'm very proud of the city. Okay. What was your career before becoming mayor? I was with American Airlines. Okay. I spent 38 years with American in management. Okay. And I traveled quite a bit over the years. So okay. it was a good thing, you know, for me professionally. Uh, and more importantly, I got to see a lot of cities. I learned a lot of good and a lot of bad. Yeah. And uh, hopefully uh, I've been able to bring some of that to Keller, you know, the lessons I've learned living in other cities throughout the country. So, how long have you lived in Keller? I came to Keller in 1989. Okay. I was at the point in my career where I was ready to settle down because the company, uh, prior to that, moved me every two at the most three years. Okay. And uh, the kids started to grow, you know, and you get a place you have to call home. Yeah. So uh, at the time, DFW was our major hub. Uh, we had just moved to headquarters down here, and as a matter of fact, I was involved in the process of helping build the Alliance uh, facility, so I knew there was okay. always going to be a future here. So. And I like Texas, so I thought, you know what, this is this looks like a place to call home. So I come down here and spent a lot of time looking around and uh, settled on Keller. I just fell in love with the town. Okay, awesome. All right, Trina, you're up. How about you? What brought you to Keller? Uh, well, I came to Keller as a consultant, helping with the Unified Development Code. And okay. after doing that for nine months, Mark asked me to join the team in the position of economic development services director okay and so I did and I've enjoyed every minute of it it's been uh, a little over three years full-time with the city now okay and so what's your how long have you been in the Keller area that four years just the four years the okay so before then where were you at so as a consultant I've worked all over Texas uh, okay before that I also had some other municipal experience I've worked for nonprofits private and then municipal corporations for 25 years in Texas. Okay, awesome, so familiar with Texas then. Katrina, let me add, is very, very experienced and we're very fortunate to have her. She does a fantastic job for us. Perfect. She really does. You're gonna be the guru on all the numbers when we start talking about that, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mark, you're up. Tell us about you. Yeah, I've been in Keller since 2000. I came here after Nationwide Search to be the police chief. Okay. And I was police chief here for 14 years. Uh, moved my family from the state of Connecticut. Okay. Where I had a 20 year law enforcement career before. Like I said, spent 14 years here as a police chief. Loved every minute of it. Uh, then the city manager job, I started doing an interim for, and I tried it on for nine months. And, and the council asked me to stay on permanently. And I've been doing that now for four years being the city manager. Okay. And again, doing a fantastic job. Yeah, you've got a good team. Yeah. And this guy, in all honesty, he was instrumental in making what we have today as far as our police department goes. 
Okay. And it is second to none here in the state of Texas. Matter of fact, nationwide, we're we're one of the top ten percent safest cities in the entire United States. So that says a lot about Walmart. Wow, yeah. that's great. So Dan, I think what we'll do is we'll kind of popcorn around. You guys can kind of take the questions. But you know, so I'm I moved here to the Fort Worth area roughly about five years ago. And when I moved here, Keller was already the place to go based on, you know, when I work with clients, great schools. Can you guys like, based on your knowledge, I guess you've been here the longest, what's been the development of Keller just over the last, you know, since you've been here, how have you seen the growth? Has it expanded just a lot in the last five to 10 years? It has, okay. uh, and especially we went through a, a what I call high growth period uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And we had several major developments come to town, one of those being a community called Hidden Lakes. Okay. And Hidden Lakes is a master plant community and it brings a lot to the city of Keller. It has its own 18 hole golf course, which is open to the public. It has its own recreational facilities and all the amenities, three swimming pools, parks, playgrounds, a lot of things that uh, didn't provide a drain on the city services themselves. And actually, Hidden Lakes is as big as some of our neighboring communities. So wow. that says yeah. a lot about it. But, you know, it, it started with that and it just continued since then. But what makes Keller unique is the quality of life. People come mm -hmm. here because of quality of life, which is our, our parks and our recreational facilities, uh, schools, you know. And, and it still has, we've been able to maintain that small town charm and mm -hmm. feel. And that's what people like about it. So, But it's grown a lot since I came here. When I came here, we had about... Uh, I think it was about 6,400 people. Okay. Now we're pushing 50,000. So we, okay. we've seen a lot of growth. <laughs> Quite a, lot a, bit. Of, a lot of roads go from two lane to four lane to some, in some cases, six lanes, a lot of traffic lights, a lot of, you know, but it's all part of growth. It's inevitable. So you can't stop it. So you do the best you can to manage it and try and get good quality growth. And I think we've done that. Right. So then, Tria, maybe you could speak on is Keller landlocked in some regard? Um, Okay. Us, we do a swap with another city. There's no more expanding the boundaries of Keller. Okay. So then in terms of developable land, it's just dwindling here, but... Yeah, the amount of green space that's available, and by green, I mean it's never been developed on before, is reducing. However, given the age of Keller, there's a lot of up-and-coming redevelopment opportunities. Right. So even though we see our brand spank and new opportunities, coming to a margin, reducing the availability. We've got investors and developers looking at, well, what about if we took this particular thing, scraped it, and rebuilt? Right. Okay, so is that that's kind of what's the main thing in Keller right now in terms yeah, of redevelopment? Yeah, growth and, in that redevelopment opportunity. Okay, okay. So, and is the population still growing exponentially, though? And not exponentially. So okay. 10 years ago, we were growing at almost 16%. Wow, the okay. last five years, we've dropped to a little over 8%. So okay. we're growing at a reduced rate. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'd say we're just about, the build out um, and what's left to build, uh, if you figure and go forward, is about 50,000. It's always been that case, about 50,000 was what yeah. people will call Keller home uh, and being built out at 50,000 uh, people. Okay. Today we're at 44, yeah. 490. And that, that plan's been in place for a long time, and I think we've done a good job as far as adhering to it goes. You know, I think we're going to end up exactly where we expect it to be. Yeah. So, I, you know, I know in my opinion as a realtor, a lot of clients seek this area out for schools. Yes, very good schools. Uh, so great school ratings. But, you know, so that's, that's usually what I always hear. But if you guys had a chance to speak to, you know, future potential residents, mm -hmm. what are, you know, the new developments going on or that are down the horizon? I know... Behind the city hall is the natatorium, which yes, looks like a, an awesome facility. Um, do, can one of you guys talk more about that? That belongs to the school district. Okay. And when we created the uh, town hall concept years ago, we created a TIF, which the school district and the county participated in. And as part of it, the school district was able to uh, build the natatorium. Okay. And, it, and it's for cold water events, for swim competitions. And if you get under any given weekend, the it's parking lots are full. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's they, they it was come, packed now. <laughs> they come from all over the state of Texas to, uh, for these competitions. And then right down the street from there, we have what we call our Keller Point, which mm -hmm. is a warm water pool. And we have both indoor and outdoor water features there. And 
the splash pad, a, yeah, the, the whole water thing. park, uh, indoor uh, physical fitness. It's about 80, 88, 90,000 square feet yeah. uh, facility that uh, is equal to any of the 24-hour fitness or any of the other uh, estab pri uh, private establishments that you can be a member of by being a citizen of Keller. So I know when I've driven through and shown clients houses, I've seen, you know, I've driven through a lot of great parks, you know, as I'm driving through. Can you guys kind of talk about, I've only seen a few, but how, how many parks are there in Keller in terms of how friendly it is for folks that love the outdoors? Yeah. And, and as we speak, we're approaching one right here. Yeah, this is our sports park. The one coming complex. up is our sports park. That's the one people are probably most familiar with because yeah. we, get a, we get more than 50% of people coming from outside the city of Keller into to here that. playing okay. sports. So in that sports park, we have soccer, we have baseball, we have softball, okay. um, and tournaments, and leagues, our Keller Youth Association, baseball and soccer leagues. And that is jam-packed every single weekend. Uh, with the, with the uh, fields being used all the time. Then we have passive parks. We've got Bear Creek Park, uh, okay. that uh, place to uh, stroll around through our trail system. And our trail system is unique in Keller. There's right now 26 miles of trails, and wow. you can virtually uh, go from one side of the city to the other side without ever getting off the trail. Really? And the city council has committed in the next 10 years to double that in size. Okay. So we'll have over 50 square miles of walkable trails, and I'm talking about eight to 10 foot wide trails. Right. Where people stroll, ride their bikes, and it cuts through, it goes through all the, all the different parks that we have in town. We have two parks up north, Overton Ridge um, is up there, and we, uh, so we continue to put an emphasis, if you're asking me what brings people here, you're absolutely right. Schools, parks, and safety. Right. Those are the, th if you ask me, it's three things. Uh, but it's also a complete package. We have some retail and some uh, dining establishments. Um, probably not as many as some other larger communities, but just enough where our citizens don't get burdened with traffic problems. Right. And, and that's what I see that they really want, is they want to come here and call this home and not be, not... They're usually coming from someplace else. They want to go one well, way around because we're living in Keller. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to go out of the city limits. Yeah. You're in Fort Worth now. Yeah. yeah. So is it is this the limit right here? Is yeah, this we, Walmart we in Fort Worth? just passed it. Okay. Yeah. It's actually the railroad tracks for most purposes, except we've got our sports park that's carved out. Okay. Uh, on the, on on the, the other side, side of it. On the other side of the tracks, yeah. yeah. So then, Trina, what are the major, you know, employers in Keller that kind of feed the economy? So the major employers are going to be the school district, the okay. city, and then your big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's, um, probably Sam's. But I would say that to build on Mark's comments and the mayor's comments about quality of life, mm -hmm. what we offer in Keller are unique boutique establishments. So boutique retail, unique restaurants, chef-owned restaurants that give you something that you can't find anywhere else. Right. Which is something we're very proud of, and that's what we're continuing to build. You know, sometimes you'll hear, I wish we had something like a La Madeleine's. Right. Which is a nice place to go, but the, the performa they're looking for is counter purpose to what Keller residents want. If you want to make they a, don't want to have right to deal with the traffic uh, that you where. La Madeleine demands in order to come to an area. So they're looking for freeway frontage. And in right. Keller, they don't want to have that traffic. We look for establishments that meet our goals, both in unique quality, as well as low traffic demands. Okay. If you want to make it right here, let's take you down through the west side of Old Town, which right here. Oh, okay. Just, I thought you were talking about yeah. that right there. I'll go back that way then. Just, That's all right. Well, you can go in the next street, but basically this is our latest project that we just completed. It's about four and a half million dollar investment into the west side of Old Town. And as we speak, Mark can tell you more or train of it. We're getting ready. We're doing a study now on the east side. You can pull Take it right here. Oh, see, All see right. the enhanced entryway and. Okay. Yeah. You will see, Trina, you've been instrumental in this. You may want to talk a little bit about Old Town and what we've done down here. So the impetus behind this revitalization project was okay. updating the infrastructure primarily. Okay. The water and the sewer lines were antiquated and needed to be replaced. Right. We also recognized a need for parking. Mm -hmm. So we added that. And while we were doing that, we added in public art, landscaping, some beautification efforts to create a destination 
but retail and restaurants would want to come. Right. And while we were embarking on this, we did have interaction with Seven Mile Cafe, which is on your left. They okay. actually bought the old city hall and converted it into one of our best restaurants in the city. Okay. At the same time, Roscoe's Smokehouse, which we mm -hmm. just passed, also took the lead on this, recognizing this was going to be the next up and coming area and they wanted to get on very early. Okay. As a matter of fact, they were under construction the same time we were under construction. Okay. And since that time, both have come out of the ground doing very well. Now, since we finished the project, we have also now seen this new restaurant on your left. Station. Is the Station Ice House. Okay. They are uh, expecting to open this this fall. Initially it was spring, but they've got such a creative owner, he has a new idea every now and then that sets them back just a little bit in their okay. construction schedule. <laughs> but they're moving along and we're really excited to have them open up. But this Overall, has been a real success. Yes, and we're seeing a great return on investment already. We've still got some parcels like this one on your left and the one across mm -hmm. the street that are yet to be developed. Okay, so this whole treat area right mm -hmm. here is... And there's two examples that a public art Trina was talking about. Okay, yeah, right yeah. here on the corners. And as we were driving down in the back there, there was what we call a promenade, a walking area, mm -hmm. adjacent to all the businesses. And it's all lined with public art. Another two examples here. Right here. We see. Yeah, so. This white sidewalk is a continuation of the yeah. promenade and it connects to the trailhead straight Okay. Ahead, you can actually walk park. under 377 to get to Bear Creek Park. Really? So or you can take this all the, the way to park. the, to the uh, all the other on the other side of, uh, of, our, of our city all the way up to Davis Boulevard see right down there it goes down yeah. under and it actually goes under the railroad track so you can walk to the sports park or you can go over to Bear Creek Park and then to the other end of town okay. eventually so okay. you can actually walk from one end of Keller to the other on our trail system so how many in terms of tourist traffic from outside of Keller is this driving a lot of that now making it a destination kind of location we have that's seen the goal. an increase in activity here okay now our retail trade area is about 150,000 people okay and we look at how much of available revenue is being spent outside of that bubble and what we can draw in this has increased what we can draw in from a retail restaurant perspective right no i love i love the fact that they're not main chain like you said they're kind of local business owners yeah. And, and again, this was the west side, and now we've hired consultants within the last year, and they're doing the study as we speak for the uh, east side, and we're going to do something similar to the east side and try and revitalize it and make it more uh, business friendly. Okay. So we're going to try to connect the east and west together, probably either with some type of walk, walk a pedestrian device that can get across this heavily used roadway or even a walkover. Okay. We can maybe connect a parking garage or something because we need some more surface and or garage parking because there's a parking issue here uh, uh, on the weekends for people that want to go to Old Town and go to the restaurant. So we've got a consultant right now that's going to bring back a plan to say how can we connect the two and what should we do over here on this side. Uh, we don't think it's going to look exactly like the other side, but it's going to uh, be be a, with these boutiques and these small little. Uh, shopping uh, areas as well, but the, the key is how do we tie them both together and people feel comfortable getting from one side to the next? Right. Because as you can see right now, it's, the, it's difficult. It's yeah. Difficult. Yeah. Okay. So, what were you no, was, one of the things we accomplished with the promenade was you can see the sidewalk is awful close to both the building front and the street itself. Mm -hmm. So when we built the promenade, we took basically the front of the building and moved it to the back. So now people park in the back and, and they come in through they the enter. back of the building and it keeps the traffic off of 377 having to deal with all the vehicular traffic. So right, right. It's been a real success story. One of our historic landmarks up here is the uh, yep. water tower. And underneath that is our Veterans Memorial, which honors all the uh, veterans people who have lived in Keller, served in the military. So in, in anticipation of activity happening on the east side, we've also had a turnover of this building up on the right. Okay. It used to be a Capital One building. Now it has been purchased and will soon be occupied by the Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. Okay. A lot of people are excited about having that credit union okay. in the city. And I think it'll be a good entry feature for Old Town. Every Old Town has a bank, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. And we just passed a construction site where they're building another new restaurant. Okay. About two blocks back, so... There's a lot of activity going on down here, which we're excited about. So, and a lot of it is in it, 
anticipation of the revitalization of this side. Right. So we expect to see the same thing happen on the east side as what we did on the west. Right. Because I can guarantee you that all this new commercial activity on the uh, west side wouldn't have happened without the revitalization. Mm-hmm. How much is, you know, there's all the development also happening on 35 up towards Alliance. Yes. Is that once that started happening, did that did you also see an increase in folks doing business here and companies um, coming here? No, that really no. didn't no. have any, any impact. impact on us because we're looking at two different things. They are looking at the national chains right. that yeah. look at that freeway traffic. So we're, we're fishing out of two different ponds. Right, right. So then, you know, as a team, where do you guys, you know, so Keller is developing, you guys are focusing on bringing in, you know, the boutique shops and increasing quality of life, even though it's great here, you know, just making it even better. Where, where do you guys see Keller long term, like the next five to 10 years? What are some of the big things? You know, this was one thing down that was coming down the pike, it's done. You guys are looking at this side and developing next. that. Is there anything else that's in the works that you're... Well, as we speak, uh, our next council agenda, we're going to be talking about uh, a new senior center for our seniors, okay. putting it to the voters come this November. Uh, we've got a uh, parks master plan under review. We're talking about a major expansion of our sports complex to improve it and all the other parks throughout the city. Uh, we're currently just finishing up a fluff, is that correct, Trina? Future. We're, yeah, we're about to take a look at the future land use plan yeah. draft and get Council input, get some more community input. So the whole future land use plan. New construction, new construction. I don't mean to interrupt you, but we've got construction going on everywhere, as you see as you drive through here. I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Trina. It's okay. We've been through an extensive community outreach to try to get everyone's vision for what Keller would look like in the next five to ten, mm -hmm. even longer years. And now that we've had all of that, we took all of that input and put it together into a draft that consultants provided. And we're expecting to present that to the council in draft form on August 7th to get some more feedback before we go back out to the community and say, we think this is what you said, let us know what you think. Okay. The real opportunity is going to be north of here uh, from running on 377, that highway we were just on, mm -hmm. north to the uh, Westlake town border. Okay. Um, Westlake is, uh, is, is, is right next to us uh, and they're having a lot of growth in um, Schwab is coming, the, uh, the financial, and that's going to mm -hmm. help uh, uh, bring people that will want to buy our homes in Keller. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think we'll get that corridor going, and I think it'll define itself once we start getting some more traffic on there, what that will look like, whether it will be mixed use with some residential and uh, commercial or all commercial. But it definitely we see that. We're also looking strongly for, we want to try to get some, our, our residents are asking for some type of entertainment. Would that entertainment be like a, a knockoff top golf or some type of tavern bowl? Or It's a very young community with young mm -hmm. families that like to get out uh, and do active things. That's why our trails are active. But it's Texas and it gets hot. So they're right. also looking for some stuff that they can do during midday when it's too hot to be in our parks and something like a, a, a tavern bowl, an upscale bowling uh, facility or, or something that has indoor components to it, whether it be indoor volleyball or, or those type of things. So we're, we're looking heavily into for that, that corridor there, so maybe some type of entertainment. Um, the other thing is that um, we have a, a well-known uh, beer uh, uh, brewery. Okay. Shannon Brewery, which is in Kroger's now, and, and it, it, they, they, they brew their uh, beer right here in Keller, and they use the water from Samantha Springs. Okay. And Samantha Springs is a bottle of water that from, from Natural Springs here in Keller, and they, they brew their beer with that, and it's, it's quite tasty, and they're looking to expand too as well, and maybe okay. even uh, look at a, a larger footprint where they are on North 377, and that's very popular on the weekends. People want to tour the uh, brewery and sit down and have a cold glass of beer. Okay, that's great. So then in terms of new residential building permits, is there much new building going on here in the area? We have some. Uh, Trails of Bear Creek and Gene Estates are right now actively building. Okay. And then we've got a couple that are coming down the road um, over here next to Northwood Church. We've okay. just recently approved uh, plan development for another 96 homes. Okay. 
most of the stuff left though is infilling some small spots of land where they're going to do custom homes okay take down 10 or 11 lots i think our days of 300 lot uh, subdivisions are gone right we just don't have that raw land available uh, without some without some significant redevelopment i don't really don't see that in the next 10 years so we're going to see some infill the price of homes are getting very expensive mm -hmm. uh, if they aren't already in mo uh, for most people uh, our new homes are are, are are hitting the next to the million dollar mark yeah so it's uh so it's, so what we see left are custom built homes uh, for uh, people that uh, want want to have that they're moving from other areas of the country Californians a lot of Californians mm -hmm. come to Keller okay. um, because they can afford to sell their house and, and, and move here something yeah. Yeah. yeah okay and a lot of this new housing the people that are coming here are because of Westlake and all their corporate campuses it's, mm -hmm. it's been a real benefit to us because they're creating all these corporate campuses you know these fortune 500 companies but the executives all need a place to live and they right. don't choose Keller so it's brought a lot of good people to town, a lot of new housing. That's great. Well, we are pulling back into town hall. Is there anything great about Keller, anything I missed, anything we didn't touch on that you guys want to make sure that the listeners know about Keller or? Well, you know, nature? again, you know, see the education itself, you know, our school district is, uh, in my mind, second to none, very highly ranked. Uh, quality of life, and again, this would bring people to Keller to quality of life. But the most important thing, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, is our public safety. And I see a couple of ambulances there, it makes me think of it. Uh, our public safety, both police and fire, are again second to none. And I'm gonna let Mark expound on it a little bit because I think it's very important that we give these guys the credit they deserve. Mark, you want to talk about the well, besides a very, very low crime rate, which we um, continually to uh, to experience in this community. It, um, our, our medical services, those, the ambulances that we have are our medical units, which is most of our calls on the fire side, our medical calls for service. It's actually an emergency room rolling up to your house. They, okay. they have la uh, advanced life support, complete communications with Baylor Hospital and all the surrounding hospitals. They have all the medications to revive you from any type of uh, sudden uh, illness. And it really is uh, a great uh, tool. And, and, and what brings people to this community, they feel so safe with the police and the fire that they just, the quality of life is just, is just is unbelievable and puts it over the top that people want to stay here. Um, mm -hmm. Along with that, that country rural feel, but yeah. still have the amenities they need in driving distance or walking distance. Right. And, and Mark mentioned Baylor Medical Center, which is right down the road here. The good thing about them is not only are they one of the best hospitals in the country, but they've just now received accreditation for a trauma center. So in the past, if we had a really severe issue, trauma case, we would have to fly whoever into Dallas okay. or Fort Worth. Now yeah. we can take them right to Baylor, which provides the trauma center. So yeah, right here. it's yeah. nice to have it in your backyard. It makes a big difference. That's great. Yeah. yeah. A very responsive city government, too. I, I've worked yeah. in other city governments. This, yeah. this city government, whether it be the council, the, uh, the, the uh, city manager, all the way down to the people providing the service on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the customer service is over the top. Right. No one will, no one, everyone's going to get a uh, return on their email right away. The council member is going to call them back. and they're, uh, We have a very active community. And they tell us what they want, right. and we uh, we try to exceed their expectations. Did he say city manager? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's fantastic. I'll tell you what, we're we're blessed to have him. Perfect, does a great job for us. Hey, man, Trina, and everybody, our entire city hall, you know, they're just fantastic people. Yeah, they do a great job, and like Mark says, very very responsive to citizens. They're all here because they care about the city and the people who live in it. Right. So. Well, Mayor, thank Pretty you, special place. Trina, Mark, thank you guys very much. My pleasure. So we're going to include, I'll include a link to the City of Keller website in the show notes here. Um, and I believe there's a, a tab that I can link there too, where they could get y'all's email or information yeah. in case you guys have any questions, want to learn more about Keller. They're responsive and yeah. they're helpful and they jumped on this podcast. So thank you guys so yeah. much for doing yeah. that. Thank you so much. We appreciate the opportunity to promote our city and you bet. let the people know they're always welcome in Keller. Yeah. So.